Welcome back, Big Bass lovers. This is DeMont with DeMont's Big Bass. Thought today would open the May Monster Bass box. Um, got it a few days ago. Hadn't had a chance to do anything with it yet, so let's go ahead and crack this puppy open. And let's see what we got here. It is getting the springtime and top water season. So this is the Booyah Squelcher. It's 3 8 ounce. Let's just see what color it is. Uh, it says River Killer. I mean, I like the wide flat head. Helps it plane a lot faster. Um, I mean, this is one of the primary colors you want to throw white and chartreuse. I mean, it's got a lot of bluegill patterns in it, so that would be pretty nice. Hmm. Looks kind of like a stouter G lock kind of hook. But these are by Sandbar Tackle. It says you have a 2 alt, a 3 alt, and a 4 alt worm hook in here. So I guess you can try their hooks. Hmm. This looks kind of weird, but it's a half ounce Lunker Hunt Kraken. It's a bladed jig. Um. It's got a split ring in between the skirt and hook. Um, I can have a closer look. This looks too weird. So let's see what we're working with here. I mean, I'm not very impressed with some of Lunker Hunt stuff. Okay, so there's the keeper has got on there. You don't see that. That's got a keeper in the back and a keeper in the front. Um, the blade does not move. It's affixed permanently. So the head and everything goes back and forth. And this kind of just scoots back and forth on a split ring. The split ring is already trying to come off. There, okay, I fixed it. Um, hook feels pretty sharp. Um, usually I'm not very impressed with Lunker Hunt stuff, but this kind of intrigues me just to see kind of what it can do. Um, I mean, it's kind of interesting. Hmm. I mean, if this works, I guess you could also, if you wanted to take this off, you could take the skirt off and put just a swim bait hook on there and run a swim bait behind here if you wanted to. That might be kind of interesting. Let's set this to the side for now. Here you get a Stanley jig. Um, this is kind of an arky head. I've used their jigs and stuff. This is a 3 16 ounce. More kind of like a finesse jig. They have hand tied skirts. I've used their jigs quite a bit. Um, kind of what I somewhat grew up on. It's kind of an arky head. Let's see, you can see that. Should be like a flatter style head. Um, now, believe it or not, this actually fl skips really good on BFS gear or spinning spinning rods for his 3 16 ounce. Um, I wouldn't really... It's hard to skip this on regular um, uh, bait casting gear. I'm trying to see the keeper on this. This one's made a little different than most of the Stanley jigs I've used before. This is not... Hmm. That's what I thought. It didn't have a keeper. Okay. So this is not like the Stanley jigs I've used before. This one's totally different. So you'd have to use a chunk. Because if you don't use a chunk, it'll just keep sliding down the hook. The hook is kind of a light wire hook. It's sharp. The brush guard's pretty thick for such a light wire hook, though. I mean, that's pretty stout brush guard fat light of hook. I mean, I'm just flexing it just by doing this right here. Um, I mean, the colors are pretty good. It's like a, what they call June bug red. Which seems like red jigs and stuff is all the rage now. Um, 
This is not like the other Stanley jigs, so I do not know what this would actually fit in with or what kind of where you'd want to present this to. I mean, you could use it pitching around wood and stuff. Um, it wouldn't really be good for skipping because you'd have to use a chunk. Or if you could find a way to keep the bait up on the hook, it'd be maybe some super glue. But you don't want to get glue inside your skirt. Um, I'll have to test it out and get back to you on it. Um, I mean, I'm more partial to um, Trash Master jigs. And there's a few other jigs I like a lot too, but <laughs> that's a cool Monster Bass sticker. Look at that. This guy's mask on and everything. Another one of these 8B8 Lab baits. I got one of these in the last box. Um, this one. It's hard to read the writing in there. Um, what does that say? I mean, it's made kind of like other shot. Like, uh, this is like one of those little divers that'll go down to about, I would say, kind of like a DT6 range, but it's bigger than a DT6. So, I guess if you're looking for a bait that is a little, that goes down to about the same depth as a DT6, but a bigger body, then that might work pretty good. I have to try it out. It's got rattles in it. Huh. All right, and we got some. The finesse worms. This one's called the dirt color. This is a color actually I like a lot. It's kind of like a green pumpkin or a melon on top and a pumpkin on the bottom. Being here in North Carolina, a lot of people like using that pumpkin color. Um, it does work. It's not the end all beat all, but if you have really clear water, this dirt color is a very good color to use. Hmm. These are called from Rabid Baits, called a Rabid Crawl. It looks kind of like a Ned Crawl. Hmm. Huh. Look at the claws. The claws are little bristles. Let me take one of these off so and get a closer look at it. This is what I need to see from Mega Bass. I was kind of not impressed from the first few boxes I got from him. But the last few boxes, they're sitting there some kind of really cool, interesting, neat baits. Like these are feathers. Now I don't know how to, what kind of action that would give. But it's kind of a Ned bait style. Plastic feels pretty soft. I mean, it's not. It's not any way elastic, but um, the head feels really. Soft. It's got like an air pocket here. That might be really cool for doing some putting on the back of a jig trailer or fishing a Ned rig, like I said. Because it's kind of small. But it's very interesting. It's kind of unique. I've never seen nothing like that before. And for me not to be able to see something like that, I mean. I'm a tackle junkie. I have almost everything made. <laughs> that is really something that surprises me. Here's another thing that's kind of interesting called chase baits. It's called a weedless vibe. It says 16 gram, which is basically half an ounce. I don't know what the little hooker's for. Is that because the hook comes off of there? Okay, so. So this hook attaches somewhere up in here. It's hard to tell and you can't really, this is not an easy package to open, so this has to be for a different day. Um, the world's first retractable and interchangeable weedless vibe hook system. That's what it says right here. Let me make it where you can read it. It's made from ultra strong 10X material that usually means elastic, but I can't really tell because I can't really feel it. I do like elastic baits. 
Um, and I'm going to make some videos on how I rig those. A lot of people ask me for that, but I haven't had a chance to do it yet. Let's see if there's anything else in the box. Now, it does appear to be all. You have your your card here. It says here that Chase Bates one I just showed you is $12.99. It says that Ultimate Strike Shed is what's called here. It doesn't have a name on this, but the 8 B8 Lab uh, B8 Lab says this is the Ultimate Strike Shed. It says it's nine dollars, and this chase bait says it's twelve fifty. The Lunker Hunt, this that we talked about earlier, it says the Kraken says it's five dollars. Um, the Booyah, the Squelcher says it's eight dollars. The Rabbit Bait, the Monster Red Crawl says it's seven dollars. The Stanley Jig says it's four dollars. And the sandbar tackle says it's three dollars. I don't really know about that. The strike king says it's five dollars. What do you mean? I mean all these prices are manufacturer suggested retail. Most of the stuff you're gonna find a lot cheaper. And I don't think anybody would pay a dollar per hook for three random hooks. Maybe if you had a pack of hooks. Um, which I don't know how much they come to a pack because it doesn't say. This is just a sample. Um, I mean, they seem to be kind of stout. Let's take a look at them. I mean, it's just like a G lock. That's all it is. I mean, see the bite? It's just like a G lock. It seems to be pretty stout. Hook point seems to be kind of pretty good. Feels like a gamakatsu, but that's a really small bite here. Um, a lot of people like these G-Lock hooks, especially back in Pennsylvania. They like to the fish little small tubes and stuff on them. I'm not the biggest fan of them. You don't really get a good hook set or a good bite. Sometimes you miss a lot of fish because the fish get it. And you see that bite is almost perfectly parallel to your hook eye. See it? And by doing that, when the bait comes through, unless you snail it, I have to do, somebody's asked me to show how I snail these kind of hooks. I will do that if people want me to. Um, show you how to snail this kind of hook. When you snail it, it makes a hook pop up. So you got kind of like that pivoting motion where hook comes up and it kind of drags across the roof of the mouth and the bait collapses down so you get a better hook. Um, but that does take more time in rigging. Some people don't like spending the time. I would rather make sure I rig the bait right to make sure I get the hook set right. A lot of these type hooks I do snail. And I do use those kind of hooks. I use straight shanks. I use... Um, I'll do another video about that, about the type of hooks I like. I like the... Uh, they're made by Trocar and Eagle Claw. The two books from them. I use those hooks on a lot of my baits. I also use... Um, Straight shanks. Um, also use um, regular offset gap hooks for like fluke fishing and things of that nature. But if you guys want to do see me do a video on how to snail those kind of hooks, please let me know. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. I always answer questions as soon as I get them. Um, and I mean, let me know what you guys think about this box. As far as I'm concerned, this is like one of their better boxes I've seen. I mean, it might not have the best value as far as price-wise, but as far as innovation goes, of stuff like I like to see like new different things, like this is new and different, these are new and different, this is new and different, I mean, you don't hardly ever see them, this right here, and this, this a, uh, B8 Labs, I mean, let's say the last one I got in the other box, and this one is the first time I've heard of this company. I don't really know for sure how good they are yet because I haven't had a chance really to use them. I mean, waters have been kind of closed around here. Um, and I've got my boat in storage, so I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, but as soon as I try them out, I'll let you guys know exactly what I think about them. I mean, they look a little bit like some 
some baits I got from AliExpress. But with those baits from AliExpress, they were a dollar each, but you had to swap all your hooks out um, and your split rings if you didn't want to lose a fish. But they ran really good. But the last bait I tried, picked up out of the pack of this, the hooks are really good on it. So that's a good thing. Well, I'm going to go and sign off. Let me know if you have any questions. You guys have a great day and good luck out there.